Good afternoon, my name is Dave Norton from Discovering New England History, and we're going to continue on here with episode 5 of the Great Locomotive Chase. We'll begin with the next slide. Now, for the last episode, eight raiders escaped from the Fulton County Jail in Atlanta. It was a uh, terrific escape. Um, they hung their leader, James Andrews, and they figured that they weren't going, they were going to be right after them one at a time. So they all got together and uh, busted out of jail. And we'll go to the next slide. Now, six raiders were caught, didn't quite make it. The last uh, six to get out of the jail that day. And Robert Buffum from Salem, Massachusetts was one of those. And he let the others go ahead of him so he could un unlock the uh, gates behind. And um, he's quite courageous in doing that. But those other six, they captured and they put him back in the jail. And we'll go to the next slide. Now the remaining six one day, without any notice, um, they took him out of the uh, jail and they boarded him on a train. Confederate prison train. And you can see a picture of a train right here with the uh, Confederate guards on the top. And they just took him on a long trip from Atlanta, Georgia to Richmond, Virginia. And really didn't say exactly what they're going to do with him. So we'll go to the next slide. And here they are, the capital of uh, Richmond, Virginia. And there's Jefferson Davis, who's the uh, president of the Confederacy. And uh, amazing, here, here they, they had no idea what they were gonna, gonna be doing. And uh, as nervous as they are, they arrived in uh, Richmond, Virginia. And we'll go to the next slide. Now, Libby Prison. <coughs> this was one of the notorious uh, Southern prisoners uh, were kept, notorious prisons in the Civil War. Richmond, Virginia. December 1862, uh, all six, you can see the picture down there, they're marched under guard and uh, confined to this, uh, this prison. And Robert Buffum was one of the six remaining in captivity. And we'll go to the next slide. And this is the great shot Libby Prison, Richmond, Virginia. And of course, it's right on the river. And it really was a, it was a terrible place to be confined. So they thought that was going to be their new home, but they only ended up staying there for about three days. Then they were all uh, taken out and transported to another prison in Richmond. So we'll go to the next slide. And this one is called Castle Thunder, Richmond, Virginia. From January to March, three months they were confined here, uh, 1863 now. And this was one of the most brutal prisons that the South had during the uh, Civil War. It was run by a, a commander. He, all dr he dressed in black, and he rode a black horse around the outside of the prison all, all day long. And they were confined inside this building. And the uh, Confederate guards were, were told, if you see anybody, anybody t even taking a glimpse out the window, shoot the kill. So most of the prisoners, they had actually had to sit down on the floor so they wouldn't get shot. And they had random shots going through there. The brutality, they said, of this prison was really unspeakable. So they were confined in there January through March 1863. And we'll go to the next slide. And this, this is amazing. <laughs> One day, they, um, the, the commandant, came into the prison, took the six soldiers right here, and had them all stand up, had them all uh, stand up at attention. And he made this comment here, which I'll read on top of this photo. All who want to go to the United States fall into line. <laughs> and of course, Robert Buffum and the others were looking at each other, and they said, hey, we're already in the United States. But back then, the Confederates uh, seceded from the Union, so technically they were not. And they, they just thought Robert Buffer never got o over this. He just thought, I, I just can't believe this. We we're already in the United States. It was quite a, uh, quite a comment to make. 
So out they went, and they were transported again by train, all chained in a boxcar, to City Point, Virginia, which was um, uh, under Union control, March 17th, 1863. And on the right, there's a picture of uh, the train there at uh, City Point, uh, Virginia, which was uh, pretty much on the, on the, almost on the coast of Virginia. And we'll go to the next slide. And this is a great, great shot here. You'll, you'll notice that uh, in the Civil War, it was the first war where they actually took photographs of it. Every other war, you, they took uh, battlefield sketches or just described it, for instance, in accounts in a newspaper. This is the first war that they actually took pictures of it. Some of these pictures are astounding. And this one here, um, I uh, kind of reorganized re, uh, it a little bit and uh, enhanced it a little bit. It's a great shot showing uh, City Port, Virginia. And that's where these six prisoners were taken. And the idea was they were going to be exchanged. So we'll go to the next slide. And this was a, a program that they had early in the Civil War. They would exchange prisoners. If uh, the South captured so many prisoners and the North captured so many uh, Confederates, they would get together, make an agreement, and exchange them, swap, uh, swap them. And this program went along uh, pretty good. Um, and they had different policies. I, I believe a, uh, if they captured a general, he was worth like probably six or 10 uh, privates or whatever. They, had a, <laughs> they actually had a, uh, uh, a, a chart, if you will, so they, what they figured was fair and on a prisoner exchange. And of course, later on, uh, General Grant was the one that uh, stopped all his prisoner exchange. And uh, he really didn't want to do that because the South had a lot, lot less uh, soldiers than the North. And the North kept on uh, capturing the Southern soldiers. And if you kept on exchanging them like that, uh, in their view, they, uh, General Grant's view, it would extend the war. So they stopped all prisoner exchanges. And the point I want to make is here, I done a, did a show before in Andersonville. So this prisoner exchange was done before Grant stopped the program. And if they had waited a few months later, they would have been sent to Andersonville. And of course, as we know, most of the prisoners there never did survive. So we'll go to the next slide. Now, since they were in Union hands and they were all, all swapped, um, one of the officers at City Point said, we're gonna, now we're going <laughs> to transport you on another train to Washington, D.C. And they were wondering, what, what possibly could this be? And so they went to Washington, D.C., and all six, and they were taken to the War Department where they met uh, Edwin Stanton, who was the Secretary of War. And he spoke to them for a few minutes. And we'll go to the next slide. Then they were taken to the White House where they met President Lincoln. So uh, Robert Buffum was uh, met Pre President Lincoln at the White House, and they couldn't understand exactly what they were going to do here. And uh, they were presented with a uh, the first ever Medal of Honor. It was um, designed by the Union during this time in the Civil War, and it was uh, such a, a long, prolonged war. And there were so many uh, heroes in the war, battlefield heroes, etc., that they wanted to commemorate them with a with a new medal, brand new medal that they came out with. So we'll go to the next slide. And it was the first Medal of Honor, March 25th, 1863. This whole story of the great locomotive chase really captivated the country. The daring of these uh, Union soldiers who. Uh, went down over 150 miles into the south to uh, steal a train and uh, come up north with the idea they would rip up the railroad tracks and burn the bridges and prevent the uh, southern army from getting reinforcements in the important town of Chattanooga. 
Um, unfortunately, in previous episodes, we can see that their, their object uh, did not uh, succeed. And the Confederates with the, uh, the Texas, the other locomotive, uh, chased them, ran them all down, and uh, uh, they ultimately captured all of them. But the country was so captivated by this that uh, they were brought to the, uh, the White House and the War Department. And if you could go back and look on that picture here, it's really quite interesting. What I did is I put the order that these soldiers were actually pinned the Medal of Honor on them. So the first one was Jacob Parrott. If you remember, he was the one he was uh, captured uh, after the uh, engine uh, ran out of steam and he made it for the woods and he was captured and he's the one that the uh, Confederate officer gave him 100 lashes to. He was pinned the first Medal of Honor. The second one was William Bessinger. He was pinned on the second ever Medal of Honor. And the third was our Robert Buffum from Salem, Massachusetts. So that's an important part of history that's uh, totally overlooked. You can see the uh, Medal of Honor, that's exactly the way it was. It's been redesigned a little bit uh, for today, but that's, that's the actual one that was uh, presented to, to all these six soldiers that were involved in the great locomotive chase. So we'll go to the next slide. Now, what happened to everybody here? Of course, James Andrews, he was hung in Atlanta and he's buried here in Chattanooga, Tennessee. There's a quite uh, memorial right there. And on the right, you can see his, they put a monument for him, James Andrews, but they put down civilian because he was never in the military. He was a leader of this group. And we'll go to the next slide. William Fuller, of course, he was the, uh, in charge of the, uh, the general, the locomotive, the one that they stole from him, right from <laughs> under him. And uh, he was a huge hero in the South. I mean, his perseverance and what he did to, to track down the, the train and uh, stop the bridge burning and, and stop, uh, saved, actually saved uh, Chattanooga at that point in time. And he's buried in Atlanta, Georgia, and that's a, uh, a memorial to him right there. He was a huge hero for the South. And we'll go to the next slide. And this is uh, the Raider Cemetery in Chattanooga, Tennessee, memorial to the, uh, the Raiders. And you can see on this monument in the center, they've actually got a, uh, I believe it's a bronze uh, casting of uh, the General Locomotive. That's in Chattanooga, Tennessee. And we'll go to the next slide. Now, in that memorial, there were eight gravestones around that memorial. And the soldiers that are buried there are the eight raiders that were actually executed. Remember, seven were hanged, were tried and hanged. And the eighth one, of course, was James Andrews when he was hanged and when his train stopped at Atlanta, Georgia. So the eight ra raiders uh, executed. And those are the pictures of the raiders. And we'll go to the next slide. Now, the war kept on, uh, kept on going on, but Robert Buffum had an awful lot of problems with, uh, after the war. He was um, uh, mentally, had, had a lot of mental issues. And I mean, if you think about it, it was 11 months of captivity um, a lot of his friends were arbitrarily hung at a moment's notice. You never knew if you were next or not. So all that was uh, certainly on his mind. And he was in all those, all those different, uh, different jails and uh, Swims Jail in Chattanooga and uh, down in uh, Atlanta, Georgia. And of course, then he was uh, Libby Prison in Richmond, Virginia. And then that other prison in uh, Richmond, Virginia Castle Thunder, and they never knew. The, pri the prisoners never knew. You know, knock on the door, open the gate. Are we going to be on a train? Are they going to take us out? Are they going to hang us? Uh, 
And of course, uh, when they did have a hanging, they made sure all the soldiers that were in those prison that were not hanged actually watched them. So it took it took a, a, a real, real, real problem. Yeah, he just had a hard time adjusting uh, to the army and everything. So he was uh, he was discharged, and we'll go back to that picture there. And from what I from what I researched, he got into an argument. Uh, somewhere and they had a altercation and it's not sure who fired the first shot but um, Robert Buffum shot this other fella and they arrested him and they confined him to the um, Union prison here Auburn prison and insane asylum and he was uh, put in there for for many years um, which was a terrible situation. And that's an actual picture of it, actual drawing of it. And he actually, um, he actually died there. He committed suicide there, which is a sad end to that uh, Medal of Honor hero. And we'll go to the next slide. And that's his actual grave. For many years, because he co uh, committed suicide, uh, they didn't want to even honor his grave. He was just kind of thrown into, uh, in the backyard of the prison there. And the Subsequent Medal of Honor winners got together and said, we really need a grave for this, this soldier. And that, that's his actual uh, grave. It's in uh, Auburn, New York. He was quite a hero. Once again, he's the fellow that stayed behind uh, <clears throat> in Atlanta to uh, unlock lock the jail and let everybody else go out first. Quite a, quite, a, uh, quite a hero. And we'll go to the next slide. Now, what happened to these trains? Well, the Texas, which was the uh, Confederate train I was chasing, the general, it's uh, now in uh, Grant Park, Atlanta. It's on uh, display, and there's an old, uh, old picture of it right there. And I just read on the internet, they, they took it out of uh, Grant Park, and they're completely refurbishing it and putting it indoors. Here we go to the next slide. And then when I went to Kennesaw Museum down in uh, Georgia, and that's a picture of the museum right there, the, uh, the general locomotive was actually right, right in that uh, museum. That's an incredible museum. If you ever get a chance to see that, uh, the history of the railroad and the Civil War, and oh, my goodness, all the artifacts they have there and the whole story of the, uh, they have a movie that they, short movie that they run, the great locomotive chain. It's a, it's a terrific place to go. And we'll go to the next slide. And I took this picture, one of my favorite pictures, uh, the general. It was hard to take that indoors there, but it came out pretty good. And there it is. So I was right, uh, right next to the, the general. Remember that locomotive that was going 65, almost 70 miles an hour? Uh, it was a f uh, in terms of uh, miles per hour, of course, uh, in terms of distance, they measured it as how many cores it would burn. <laughs> So the trip from Atlanta to Chattanooga was a five chord run. Quite a bit of history right here. And there it is, all refurbished uh, indoor as a memorial to uh, the courage of all these raiders in the great locomotive chase. Here we'll go to the next slide. Now there were actually, during the story, there's a New England connection, parts of the story here. I just want to summarize some of these. There's uh, General Ledbetter on the left. <laughs> He's actually in charge of Chattanooga, commander of Chattanooga, and he finished third in his class at West Point, and he decided to join the Confederate Army rather than fight with the Union in the Civil War. And he was from Leeds, Maine, of all places. And originally the Raiders thought they were going to get a break when they were each uh, interrogated by him because he was former New Englander. Uh, not so. <laughs> he was one of the toughest interrogators that they faced. In the center, another part of the story, we have Samuel Morse from Charlestown, Massachusetts. Very important, not only for the great locomotive chase, but the entire uh, Civil War. He invaded the t invented the telegraph from Charleston, Massachusetts. And that was an important part of this whole story because the Raiders were going up the line as and they would stop uh, for a few minutes and climb up a pole and cut the 
uh, telegraph lines so that the uh, Confederates couldn't send a message up the line and have uh, Confederate Army waiting for them. And they were very successful in doing that. The only thing that stopped the train was the fact that they ran out of wood and water for the boiler. And of course, on the right, Robert Buffum from Salem, Massachusetts, who was the third ever Medal of Honor winner in the United States. And we'll go to the next slide. And I put this together. They, during history, there are several uh, commemorative stamps. Uh, this one here is the one they actually did on the uh, great locomotive chase. You can see the general on the stamp. Uh, the uh, actual locomotive was manufactured by Hudson Manufacturing Company. I believe that was in New Jersey. And you can see James Andrews on the top and, of course, Robert Buffum. That's quite a tribute to have a, a stamp made. And, of course, on the right you have uh, Sammy Morris, uh, who's in, certainly involved in here with the Telegraph. And uh, that's his stamp there, commemorative stamp. Um, We'll go to the next slide. And I'm just summarizing this here. Um, on the left is William, picture of William F Fuller. That was his train that was stolen. And he uh, chased it all the way up the line there with the Texas. And that's the picture of the uh, Texas on your lower left. And on the right, James Andrews. And that's a picture of the general. That's the general which I saw uh, down in Kennesaw. And showing this map right here, you can see it started on the bottom on the lower right in Atlanta. That's where William Fuller had his uh, original uh, general. And he came up the line and it was stolen by James Andrews. And then uh, the chase continued and continued. And when the uh, general finally ran out of uh, steam, water, and uh, wood, it stopped on his tracks up there in Ringgold, Georgia. And the actual distance of that chase was 113 miles. And um, that was the, uh, actually the most, uh, in history, the most daring raid of the, uh, of the Civil War. And we, we covered in this story pictures of many of the uh, uh, depots are still there, and we went from depot to depot, and we covered all the uh, story uh, as the trains went uh, through them or stopped for everything. And, uh, you know, we tried to bring to you the, uh, the full story of the great locomotive chase. So we'll go to the next slide. And Robert Buffum's journey, a couple of great pictures here. He actually started in uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee, where they uh, boarded the train in April of 1862. And after uh, the great locomotive chase and being captured and going through all the prisons, um, he was exchanged at City Point, Virginia in March of 1863. So essentially, he spent uh, 11 months down the South in captivity. And that's certainly quite a story. In order even to get to Chattanooga, they had to go across the uh, Cumberland Mountains <laughs> Travel 100 miles by, by foot in three days to make it to uh, behind enemy lines to make it to Chattanooga on top of that. <clears throat> incredible journey, incredible story. We'll go to the next slide. And these, once again, are the first uh, Medal of Honor winners. It's, it's quite a story, very uh, often uh, overlooked. Um, and I have a few things here on, the, on my desk I just want to review with you. Um, one is this book right here, Stealing the General. And uh, historians or whatever agree that this is the best book probably ever written about the great locomotive chase. Aside from uh, William uh, Pittenger, who was one of the raiders, and quite a few years after the chase, he wrote a, uh, his description of, uh, of what happened. So it's great that these um, actual six raiders uh, survived, and it's great they were able to write all their, uh, their stories down, and some of them actually go and publish, publish them. But this one here is great because it takes it, takes it right from the beginning, takes you all through, takes you through all the different jails and all the problems that they had 
from one jail going into another jail. And then this book here I got when I was in Kennesaw, and this is a terrific uh, source book also. Uh, that is a terrific museum. It's kind of hard, hard to pick out which book you want to get. <laughs> but, I mean, on the inside of this, it's got, uh, if I can show you here, yeah, biographies. It's got biographies here, hold it up here, of all the different uh, Confederates and also the unions and uh, everyone that's uh, here in the Civil War. It gives a complete biography. So this is excellent. This was an excellent source. And um, it, it just, uh, w when you read this, it's, uh, it just jumps out to you. Here's the other one, the page here, of course, with uh, where my hand is on the bottom here. There's uh, Robert Buffum. <laughs> He's, he was uh, certainly quite a, quite a character. And I also want to mention, if you happen to get this, uh, this is excellent right here. It's a complete, Walt Disney made this uh, back in the late 50s. Uh, now it's out in the DVD, uh, The Great Locomotive Chase, starring uh, Fez Parker. A lot of folks remember him. He played Davy Crockett. And it, it was filmed on location. <laughs> and um, um, unbelievable story here with the, the, the trains and the whole, the whole episode here. And everything is completely factual in this, which is kind of interesting for Hollywood. They didn't uh, <laughs> add a lot of extra scenes in it or whatever. The names are actually of the Raiders in there. And once again, they mentioned uh, Robert Buffum in there when... Uh, uh, they got together and they were going to cross the mountains to get to Chattanooga. Uh, Andrews called out, and it's right here in the movie. He called out, you know, it's supposed to be the skies and whatever, and he said, and you, Robert Buffer, since, since you're the only one from Massachusetts, when you're on the train with all the Confederate soldiers, don't talk. They'll know, <laughs> they'll know if you're from up north. But this is a great, it's full color. It's a great movie in great detail. Very, very well done. So there's a lot of things involved in here. And when I went down and uh, did all this, uh, went down to Atlanta, Georgia, and I've been to Dalton, Georgia, and I've been to uh, Ringgold and uh, Chattanooga. It's a, it was a great experience I'll never forget. So once again, this is Dave Norton from Discovering New England History, and have a good afternoon. <laughs>